Uh-huh. But um, I, <laughs> it was just longer than I expected, like six hours. You play a six-hour game? Yeah. A lot of people play like six-hour games, but they don't do it like weekly. So you know, you gotta schedule it. That's the thing, is that because like we did already sucks. miss what we wanted, and yeah. so I was like, gotta make up for lost time, and then also didn't know when the next one was. So right. Really, like, it's really like all packed in together. Yeah. Like, I mean, man, like, imagine having, like, a five-hour game on hey, Halloween. Hey, Pudgy there right there, Ethan, but, uh, hey, everybody, didn't see you there. Uh, welcome back to Wayward 7. My name is Will. I'm the Forever DM here on the channel, uh, and, uh, welcome back. Now, uh, we're gonna shake things up a bit differently this time, so I'm gonna have to manually look at what I'm about to do, because I normally have this down to, like, a, you know, <laughs> uh, muscle memory. But, uh, we're going to stage left. <gasps> Whoa! Hey! What's we, up? We did promise that I would start out the spiel that way Ethan would have the smooth transition. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be smooth anyway, because you know what today is? What is it? Aside from it being Friday, which is your favorite day of the yes. week. Yes! <laughs> it is also International Women's Day! Yay! Yay! That's how we started out on the women's side. The best side. Um, <laughs> but, uh, saying saying. If you deny, you I hate mean, women on this day. Women are great. We have some great... You know, NPC women in our game. We have great NPC, not NPC, women <laughs> players. <laughs> <laughs> We're great Reagan, NPC, you're great NPC. NPC. <laughs> I was fine. You gesture to the two of us. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. All right. Anyway. Ethan. <laughs> there wasn't even a plug. You just said we're women. Um, we're women. That <laughs> is the plug. Chance. That's perfect. <laughs> On a more important note, um, let's look at another national. Let's no! <laughs> no! No, 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 we're gonna stick you know with this one. You know what, maybe we will, um, maybe we will. You, okay, you know what, we're gonna look Hold this on, up we're gonna do right this on now. camera. What on day camera. is it? <laughs> on, on, on camera, we're doing this. Um, if you... I didn't plan any of this, just so you <laughs> know. Um, so I hope everybody is ready for this. You guys got it? If, got it? If got you... it? Who, who am I turning the camera to? <laughs> okay. Bam! Um, um, hey, if you don't hate women, you should subscribe, because if you don't subscribe, that means that you hate uh, Lauren and Reagan, and that means <gasps> you hate women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, he said National Peanut Cluster Day. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that last week? Yeah, oh, last week. Yeah, okay, yeah, it was an important holiday that we skipped over. <laughs> we, 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 we skipped, skipped over, over it last cluster. week. So we have to come back to it. So we have, have to share, back share back. with the International Women's Day. Uh, retort? <laughs> if you love women, like <laughs> follow us on our social media at the Wayward Seven at, at on all the social on the social medias. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Reddit. thank you, Reagan, for being coherent. Oh, it's the, Ides, <laughs> it's the Ides of March. Oh no, that means we cut to the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Approaching me, she said, I've never seen a man who looks so all alone. And could you use a little company? If you could pay the right price, your evening will be nice, and you can go and send me on my way. I said, You're such a sweet young thing, or why you do this to yourself? She looked at me, and this is what she said Oh, there ain't no rest for the wicked, money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay, I got I could. Oh no, there ain't no rest for the wicked until we close our eyes for good. Not even 50 minutes later, I'm still walking down the street when I saw the shadow of a man creep by the side. And then he swept up from behind, he put a gun up to my head, he made it clear he wasn't looking for a ride. He said, Give me all you got, I want your money, not your life. But if you try to make a move, I won't think twice. I told him, You can have my cash, but first you know I gotta ask. Trees. I got bills to pay, I got mouths to feed There ain't nothing in this world for free 
but I don't see but what is celebrated here. on March 8th? International Women. So <laughs> they're having a discussion on what days are what, and I am the DM, so I'm here to run the game. <laughs> and last time we left off, the party finally entered the city of Basilica. There was a. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> fine, Sorry. There was a brief uh, discussion outside the gates of Basilica on uh, what to do once inside, where their objectives, their goals align, and it was ultimately decided that they should send Willem to scout ahead, try and find some information on the missing brothers, Gwen's missing brothers. From there, Icarus took Mastani to see the sights of old that he once cherished with his brother his other friends that have long passed or moved on to different places. Atop the top of the Colossus that overlooks Basilica. With that being said, they all returned. Check, I'm gonna knock you out, boy. <laughs> knock you out, because uh, they went to visit Icarus's old master, Gaix, asking for advice and restocking on supplies in his little quaint legionnaire shop. With that being said, as everybody heads out into the night towards Icarus's do, uh, domicile that he once called home. That brings us to you guys. As the sun sets on Basilica, you see the Sovereign's Palace ignited with the bright oranges and golds and reds of the sunset. Truly, Cilicine. That being said, as you travel through the Market District all the way around, um, up through the Temple Quarter, you eventually arrive at Icarus's old home. Quaint, a large forge outside. You see that there are different sorts of uh, armors kind of on racks. Uh, most of this kind of sectioned off from the street. Um, but it's it's fairly big. It's got um, multiple stories. And you kind of notice at the top stories, there's these open windows where it looks like uh, there has been movement to and from, uh, likely from bird folk. That being said, um, you see that the lantern lights are lit inside. It is dim, but there appears to be movement. What are you guys doing? What time is it? Oh, uh, it's sunset. Mm. I'm gonna yeah, just a few hours. lean in towards Icarus. If I see Nico, I can't promise I won't hold my hands to myself. Just I second that. I adore that. I will politely use my words. I won't. I will start with their metal hand. <laughs> this is his fault, you know. Technically, Icarus is froze, unresponsive, okay. like just like staring at the door. Very excited to meet you, Cass. Do you door. want to knock on the door? You guys knock. Yeah, you guys watch as her pops out. Ab. And there's a one minute, one minute, kind of kind of calling from inside, um, and it is. <clears throat> three minutes or so before eventually you kind of hear that kind of hobbling noise and eventually the door kind of flings open. Looks about. Icarus, you did come visit. And you go, hey, a boy's home. In those three minutes, I have retracted the truck just because I don't want <laughs> um, the surprise of their son coming home plus a weird contraption very outside. traditional. It, it was oh, it was that was the computer. Yeah, that, that That's hilarious. Oh, the, I thought you were playing Interstellar. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was what immediately jumped in my mind. Uh, no, I'm gonna yeah. retract the truck, and then I'm also just gonna hand the ring off to her. Okay. And pull him aside. <laughs> uh, so your father Vespus, uh, who resembles Icarus but with more kind of ruffled, older kind of matted feathers, um, this kind of bald eagle appearance. Um, uh, with these bright eyes, um, kind of looks about bright the group eyes. before uh, turns back, um, like and you kind of see uh, Icarus, your mother, kind of hobbling out with her cane um, uh, astray, as she uh, looks more similar to Nico, um, and just hey, come here, come here, and kind of ushers you into a big hug as the wings kind of wrap around and. Pull as tight as they can, um, uh, the three of them. Um, you, you're hungry. Come in, come in. <laughs> uh, and pull, drags you inside. Um, Unless you are you, fighting. <laughs> no, I'm not fighting. Okay. Do you want us to come? Through? You see, you see, that's what. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, Sorry, we're his friends. We met while we were um, on the road in Ross. Yes. Yes. Um, All right, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like at, as each one walks through the door, I'm just gonna sort of like introduce them. Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna immediately shake their hands. Uh, <laughs> dinner's ready. We gotta eat. Okay. They are for for context, especially um, with uh, like Nistani and uh, Chris. Mm. I, I imagine, or I forget how tall you are, but I, Vespus Tom. is a very very large Aracocra. Very big. He's five foot four. <laughs> Woo! I'm still how tall did I make this time? 5'10"? Yeah, I made it 5'10". Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm still, bit. yeah. Yeah, he's Six. buff. <laughs> he's more He's more wide, you know. Uh, got uh, very uh, built arms, uh, probably for the forge outside. But uh, you see that they've uh, kind of set around. Uh, the house is a bit messy. Um, there's uh, kind of clutter here and there, lots of different utensils, uh, likely used in the most recent cooking. Um, the hearth is still kind of warm. Uh, he kind of watches Vespus, walks over, kind of stokes it a bit, and throws some more logs into it. Um, and you see that this large stew has been made uh, for the two of them. <laughs> uh, but now, uh, kind of, there's a, a bit of relief um, in Acarus's mother's eyes as uh, there's people to finally sit at the table um, for once. Uh, you notice that a lot of the furniture is more s slightly scaled down, um, so your knees kind of sit I'm a little bit up towards you. Can I try and, can I, I guess, kind of sit cr like cross-legged? Yeah, 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 you can kind of sit cross-legged. Um, but it, uh, it's very comfortable. <laughs> like, Chris, like, yeah, Chris is kind of like, at his knees, like, uh, you know, a little bit up, by the table. Um, they go, oh, thank you. He <laughs> takes a bowl. Um, but, uh, you watch as uh, the straight kind of serves everybody. Um, and Vespa's kind of, yeah, Chris. What have you been up to? Been traveling. Uh, a did. lot. We, uh... Oh, wait, hang on, do I want to mention that? Uh, yeah. Travels, adventures. We, uh, we got into a few fights, but always found our way out. Mercenary work. <clears throat> Some. Mm -hmm. Not joining back up, are you? I don't plan to. You visited your brother yet? I've seen him. Where? He's not in town. Um, we in in Ross. We uh, uh, we came over the mountains, uh, by way of uh, Mortadess before mm. we got here. Um, Lady Erlin was uh, helping the city there. She would have been working with the, the protector, her guard. She was. Mercenary work for her. She hired us out to help uh, pass some things around. Good. That's my boy. Always helping. He, uh, kind of turns towards. Uh, um, and she just kind of gives a nod <laughs> uh, before kind of uh, bringing spoons to everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you notice that they don't have spoons, but they're just kind of like dipping in and out of the <laughs> soup bowl. <laughs> I'm a <drinking> bird. <laughs> um, Chris is going to do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's customary. Um, Chris thinks this is. <laughs> Chris, Chris also. <laughs> He does not drink anything. He just dips his nose in it <laughs> over and over. Soup. This isn't working, guys. Why are you doing that? Uh, so, uh, has a, anybody bringing up any co topics of conversation here? or? I, um, I feel like Nastani would try and take cues from Icarus and so not say anything that she's not supposed to. Okay. Or maybe make like comments on like, how nice the home looks, and probably compliment Icarus, just that way he's not seen in a bad light. By <laughs> so, just keeping up idle conversation because she doesn't like quiet tables. Eventually, your idle conversation is cut off by Vespas uh, once again. 
Did you see your master? Gaius? Well, uh, as soon as we got into town, we, uh... I see. You don't want to come home first. Yeah, he was on the way. since I've been home. Uh, we agree on that. How long are you staying? At least a few days. Oh, good. There's, um... Uh... Gwen's brothers have been caught in some trouble, and we're trying to, uh... Did you hear that? We're trying to find them and, and help them out. Yeah. Take it up with the local authorities? I'll probably uh, talk with some of them tomorrow morning. All right. <laughs> well, <sighs> glad you're home. Your mother prepared the nest upstairs, and I guess we can get some others. Stop. Ready. <laughs> you um, gave and then me there's so a much crap. At the door. You can tell us. You got more friends. Yes. Oh, yes. I, yes. Yes. I do. I, I open up the door. <laughs> okay, you run over to open up the door. And Willem, surprise to me somebody at his height level. Oh, hey, everybody. Oh, hey, everybody. Uh, hi, <laughs> hi, Willem. Um, he walks in and uh, uh, kind of begins to shake hands with Vespis uh, and your mother and uh, kind of takes a minute, makes himself a bowl of soup. Where's your spoons at? <laughs> Vespis, looking very annoyed, <laughs> kind of points off to the side and he kind of reaches up and pulls one out, <laughs> kind of uh, pulls up a seat next to you and... Hi. Hey! Uh, should we have this conversation somewhere else, or...? Probably. Okay. Can you grab your soup and let's step outside? Okay. Can we take well, our soup? it's cold, but all right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the soup! I'll bring the bowl back. <laughs> Walks outside with you. <laughs> What's up? Um, well, I'm more... Well, what's up with... Uh, did you find... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this bowl of soup on the floor, <clears throat> uh, on the dirt. <laughs> right, so, um, a couple things, right? Uh, so, uh, luckily, uh, we did have some interesting news. Uh, one of my buddies down in Proxima saw uh, an advisory caravan moving through. Uh, what about, oh, three days ago? Okay. Three um, days ago, hasn't left. Um, said the carts were pretty big. There was about eight of them. So I presume in eight carts you could probably fit two brothers, uh, should they be in the in the realms being not these brothers. As a math guy, I can confirm. Um, well, one of them is a giant or half giant. Well, that works out. They were big carts. Good. Okay. Um, um, do you know which direction? I have an idea. I know there's two different areas that they could potentially be: Garvia or Callisti when it comes to where they might be being held. Right, so the information I got is that they uh, that there's a caravan inside the city. Uh, my my idea was to uh, go and see if I could ask around town for you tomorrow, uh, see about where the whereabouts, where this caravan was headed. I got a friend uh, uh, who lives uh, down in the Noble Quarter, thought I might ask him. Okay. Uh, I got a few buddies in the Merchant's Ring too that I was thinking about talking to. Well, I'll go with you tomorrow. Okay. I I think we're pretty set. Um, do right. you have the speaking stone? Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Sending stone? Yeah. Thank you. Um, is that is that everything you learned? Uh, I got some ideas of where to start looking. I'm thinking we should start in Noble Quarter, uh, you know, because Sovereign's Court is closer uh, to that site, so I have a feeling that if there's something we'll see, probably there. But I got a feeling that the folks in the Merchant's Ring talk a lot, so we might go hear some gossip tomorrow. Uh, other than that, I've got a plan C, but I'm still working on it. Okay. Well, we'll save that for if we need it then. Yeah. Well, then I, I really do appreciate of course, everything well, you've done. Um, of course. It's looking real good. We got news immediately. Right? We got signs of it all. Add to that, I think Gwen looks like more nervous. Hey, hey. Jenna, well, still look at me. We're talking. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we're gonna 
to find them. They haven't left the city. I've got my guy. He's going to tell me in case they do. I've got a little pigeon waiting. Is it just... an actual pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> I just... Um... Sitting on Eric Harper that looks like a pigeon. <laughs> It's, Wouldn't be the first time. It's Isaac, not Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just... The closer we get to finding them, the more I feel like they might slip away. I don't know what to expect or who we're dealing with. The people that I, I gave the people what they wanted and they didn't give them back, so I can't imagine they're not expecting me to at least look for them. And I'm just, as much as I want to have hope and believe, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. Wait, but you don't go to shoulder all this responsibility on your shoulders. I'm helping you out. You got a bunch of friends too who are helping you out. We're gonna find them. We're gonna get them. Don't worry about it. I get it. I just. I know. They have their own problems as well. to add to that burden that they've already had and one of my best friends is not very happy with me right now so well i'd say don't worry <laughs> you've got a master tracker on your side looking out got my eyes peeled on the streets i've already go talk to some folk i'm probably going to talk to some folk before i head off back home um but speaking of which if you guys need a place to stay i've got plenty of beds okay which means i can push two together and they probably could be good for you that works. Um, uh, I think if you need a place to stay tonight. Well, I think Icarus might want to spend some time with his family, okay. and we were going to look for a tavern, but if... You could go to a tavern. I got a few recommended recommendations if you do, but I shall offer my uh, services for free if you wish to not pay. That might be the best option for us okay. right now. Um, well, like you said, it's cold. Let's get inside. Agreed. He picks uh, his soup up before. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, much. of course, Gwen. We're gonna find him. Don't worry about it. And then I go inside, sit next to Miss Donnie, and I pass her the sending stone. Mm. Soup. It's on you. What time is it? It is on uh, you. Uh, the sun has set, you know, maybe an hour ago. So. Like day time. Day yeah. Oh, before we go inside, can I look at the moon? Yeah, you look at it? Slowly. Slowly. Like, naturally, or a little bit too fast? About the same pace you're used to. Okay, sounds good. And you, the, the pace we're used to over the past recent <coughs> times. Mm -hmm. Correct. So Correct! What, what phase is it at? <laughs> you didn't expect me to ask that No, one. that's okay. I have it, I just have to take it. Alrighty. Um, you're looking at about the first quarter. home cooking, uh, which is nice and a big change of pace from uh, dried meats and fruits that you've been carrying. Um, but eventually uh, dinner winds down, um, bowls are collected, um, uh, you see Lestray kind of uh, cleaning the spoon, something she's not used to. Um, I would, I would probably help her. <laughs> Turns her faucet on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, she kind of has the, uh, the bucket of water and is just kind of cleaning it thoroughly. But, um, yeah, eventually the point of the night comes to, uh, where's everybody going? Do you want to stay here with your parents? Okay. I well, literally live two blocks down. Willem has graciously offered to spare some beds for us. If, if that's something you guys are willing to do, it's free. We don't have to pay for an inn. What do you think, Miss Donnie? If I have a bed to sleep on, I'll be fine. So. <laughs> I think lead the way. Except you have somewhere to be, don't you? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, this should be fun. <laughs> so, uh, as well, I'm kind of uh, just the like, three tallest party members. Okay. <laughs> just having to accommodate. I was gonna. I like to imagine like you two start following Willem out, and Chris is still standing in the like. <laughs> Chris, come I like on. To in the bird nest. Actually. No, no. I thought he said it was okay. Baker is going to stay with you tonight. There's not, it's me size, so there's, there's no room. Chris. I coil. It's, 
No <laughs> it's not a lizard nest, it's a bird nest. We have similar nests. <laughs> Chris, no, come on. No, we lived in a cave. <laughs> These. <laughs> Chris, I'm, come on. I'm gonna like look at Vespas, like, it's not my house, I, I can't. They can stay, stay in Nico's room. Does that work for you, Chris? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 So, uh, Gwen and Astani head over to, with uh, Willem. Willem. Mm. Um, and Herb, you taking the car? Taking the car? Going to go meet the uh, Willa Bagma? Okay. Do you know where the Willa Bagma is? No, but I know it's the well. Okay. That's good enough for me. Well. Um, we'll do this first, and then we'll get to that. So. Uh, Willem leads you a few blocks uh, down uh, the road, getting closer towards the kind of large uh, pillarous temple, uh, closer in the distance. Yeah, anyway, my cousin uh, B, she, uh, she's a priestess there, um, you know, praise the gods and all that. But uh, anyway, hope, you know, you're okay with lots of uh, roommates. Yeah? That's okay. Um, I'm accustomed to it. Great. Well, the rooms are separate. That's the good part. <laughs> My whole family lived in one house. I probably would not have enough rooms for the roommates that I would have. So, so I think I'll be fine. You uh, get to this uh, large uh, estate. Um, there's uh, nice fencing decor. There's a courtyard. It is way too extravagant to be his place. Villain. Yeah. Where are we? Oh. Place. This is not your <laughs> home, is it? This is the Wild Wonder Estate. Insight, can I throw Yeah, make an insight, insight check. <laughs> oh no. Uh. Seven. Seven? He's being truthful. Is he being truthful? You watch this. Uh, now, if you could do me a favor, just wait here for a minute. I'm gonna go announce your entrance. Be right back. <laughs> you watch as he kind of scuttles. Uh, and there's a door there, uh, but there is a smaller door frame carved within that door that he kind of knocks on real quick, opens up, hey! And there's a kind of a, a loud clanging as you hear something is thrown against the walls. You see him duck and kind of like, I'll be right back. It's just the door behind him. Um, and there's kind of uh, some shouting that goes back and forth uh, for a second, uh, muffled. Um, you hear the shatter of glass. Um, Jesus. And. Uh, then it kind of begins to quiet down for a second before you hear more glass shattering, more to... screaming, and then eventually quiets down. Um, and you see as Willem pushes open the door. Ah, they're expecting us, believe it or not. And you see the larger door frame open. Um, and you see uh, a human woman <laughs> standing above, uh, uh, above him in uh, what appears to be a cleric's uh, kind of armor. Uh, in tunic, um, and she looks down at Willem and looks over at the two of you. Um, you must be Willem's friends. Yes. yes. Is it okay that we stay here? Of course. Come inside. D My name is Beatrice. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you. B is what? Cousin Beatrice. Beatrice, I'm assuming, is probably what you prefer. Cousin? Beatrice is my preferred name. Okay. With Beatrice. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, as so funny, she holds open the door, um, you see that this door was likely made just for her, as the rest of the folks inside this house are all gnomes. Large variety of gnomes. Um, and they're all kind of going about, you see that they're kind of wrapping up the dinner uh, I've heard process. i a story like this once. Uh, there's uh, kind of stools for everything, as everything was scaled for, uh, you know, a standard human's height, um, but the gnomes seem to have made uh, adjustments that kind of pushing around these little ladders and stools and different sorts um and uh Willem kind of steps in wild wonders this is my friends <laughs> they're gonna stay here tonight so, so willow wally out <laughs> and you see the two gnomes who are playing cards on the table screw that guy <laughs> <laughs> throw the cards down and go move your stuff if there's well, no bed we're not gonna take their beds no well, we're not using them tonight <laughs> <laughs> no, they're night owls, and they're going gambling. Right now? Yeah, later tonight, yeah. <laughs> what did you bring us into? My home. Oh, okay. This is, is your my family. Uh, would you like to meet everyone? Sure, yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Um, so he has their names. So he, uh, <laughs> so excited for this. Yeah. Um, okay. I can give you the full list of names if you want. <laughs> yes, I want. If the you full have list. it, I am I want, so if you excited. Have the full list, I want can I get Beatrice an apple? <laughs> she, you hand it out to her, and she takes it. Thank you. Read a story like this once. Beware the green ones. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> He starts at the uh, with the uh, kind of ushering forth the elders of the gnomes. These two uh, uh, gnomes who seem to be very much uh, up in the years for gnomes, maybe pushing, you know, three hundred ancient gnomes. Um, but you kind of see one has very kind of pale white skin. The other one's more tanned, uh, sun kissed. Um, this is uh, Wilgum. Uh, Wilgum, I wonder. Um, and this is, uh, well, we don't talk about him, <laughs> but you can call him Mr. W. Wild Wonder. Mr. W. Wild Wonder. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't say his full name because it brings back PTSD of spiders. Uh, I got it. Not gonna say the full name? You kind of see as he... What's my name? You know it? You won't tell me! Mr. W? Uh, 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 waddles away. <laughs> um, and then he waddled away. <laughs> and so uh, he kind of goes down the line as, as uh, kind of pulling the gnomes uh, from each section. It's Wendy, Walter, Wanda, Wayne, Whitney, Warren, Willow, Wesley, uh, Winoa, Winston, uh, Wilhelmina, uh, Wyatt, Wren, Wade, Winifred, Wallace, Winter, Wolfgang, and Waverly. Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all here. Um, Theme. The W names make it easier. Yeah. Well, it's a wild wonder tradition. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Be be thankful you were spared from it. So I look at B. I'm adopted. Okay, uh, figures. Yep. Um bye, Mr. W and By my senile father, yes. He's um has seen better years, but we're doing our best to take care of him. Blink. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, where do we need to be, Willem? Right. Okay, cool. So this way, um, and he kind of leads you up through a series of hallways and stairs. Uh, the house is uh, tight, uh, kind of cramped, other than uh, the obvious hallway that is for B um, to move about. Um, but as he kind of leads you through a very narrow staircase, the steps are very close together um, and kind of pushes open a door. Uh, you might have to crouch down inside. Don't worry, we got high ceilings here. High ceilings um, for you, or high ceilings for us. Come in. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you step in. Uh, the ceilings are about uh, seven feet tall, um, so you can stand up comfortably. Stand comfortably, yeah. Um, and you kind of see as uh, Willem is starting to push uh, three sets of beds together, um, and kind of begins to take the sheets off, and kind of uh, it's like walks out for a minute, and brings out some larger sheets, and kind of starts. Can you help? No, I got it. Your guess. Just, you know, make yourself comfortable. There's some chairs in the corner. Well, I'm going to fix that. <laughs> um, and he, ta he takes a few minutes, like, properly setting up the room for you guys, um, putting the three mattresses together for you. Um, he goes, uh, takes out the small chairs, and starts to wedge some uh, uh, larger, uh, yeah, thinner chairs in. Easy for movement. Um, and eventually, um, kind of, well, breakfast is at Sunrise. Um, okay. He makes the most amazing flapjacks you've ever seen. So, uh, that being said, uh, can I get you anything to make you more comfortable? Um, do you have like a courtyard or anything that I can go to for privacy for a moment? I have to make a call. Yeah, we got a garden out back and the courtyard out front. Alright, and um, where's the way to the garden? I just yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, I'll be right back. That's <laughs> good. Uh, I think it's probably for the best that Chris stayed with me. <laughs> uh, you watch as uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of leads you through the uh, labyrinth of hallways here, um, eventually back down to the central area, um, kind of following the, the larger hallway to the back of the house, uh, pushes open uh, his door and then kind of like some, pushes open the larger door. Um, and there's a very nice uh, kind of back courtyard here with a fountain, stone benches, um, and a statue of the two elderly gnomes. Um, with a little water kind of sprouting out of one of the fingertips as the other one is drenched. 
Does it have like a plaque with their names on it? Uh, it does, and one of them has been scratched out. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really that bad? We can't know his name. He can't read it. He can't. <laughs> Do you? I mean, I could tell you. Do you really want to know? I'm not going to use it against the man. Okay. Well, look. It all started when they adopted B, and you know there was kind of an identity crisis amongst the brothers because you know they're brothers. They co-raised her, uh, so technically she's got two dads. Um, I mean, all for it. Power. Right, but, but the brothers. So you don't want to say that out loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, well. So see the fountain, uh -huh. the one, the one with his name crossed out. Uh, it all started when they adopted me, um, uh, and they were stuck. They make this sound like uh, like it's a bunch of ships connected together. Uh, they were, you know, uh, hurtling through, uh, you know, the air, something about, and then, welcome. Uh, he he made it out all right. His brother, little friend friend. Don't say that out loud. Mr. W. Mr. W. Uh, you know, was also fine. And, uh, you know, they raised me for a few years. A few, you know, 10, 20 years. This was recent. And, uh, uh, well, you know, eventually, uh, Wilfred had a horrible accident at the temple where a lot of alms were, uh, spilled down the, uh, the central corridor and he was trapped in there for three days. Oh, okay. So we're st we're still looking for a cleric who might be able to restore his mind properly. <laughs> um, so until then, we call him Mr. W because if he hears his name, he starts screaming about spiders. <laughs> Probably because Wilgum was known for turning into spiders and terrifying his brother. Oh. So Wilgum is forbidden from turning into spiders until recently. He's a druid from the Northern Lands. Yeah, it's real, it's real complex. I'm uh, not gonna judge any family dynamics, my family's crazy themselves. For now, call him Mr. W. Mr. W. <coughs> yeah, and I'm sure Wilfred will take revenge eventually. Honestly, it's only a matter of time once he gets the sanity back. I think Wilgum's been stalling, because he knows. <sighs> okay. Love, lovely garden, aside from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah. That, uh, Wil Wilcom made that, uh, that statue of him pouring the water on Wilfred, and oh, we had to scratch out the name. Is it like, is it like a fountain? It's a fountain, yeah. Okay, so it's there's like a dynamic fountain, water, there's it's... actual water, yeah. I love that. He's a druid, he, you know, does stuff like that. It used to be different. It used to be much more brotherly. It's being an ass of late. Don't know why. It's a prank. It happens in the family. A long, long-term prank, okay. Yeah, you know happens between family members yeah I know anyway so uh, yeah this is the this is the gardens but don't step on the roses B will be upset don't want to be upset anyway uh, you know where your room is mm -hmm. all right great we'll check in Gwen okay okay so he leaves um, door opens Gwen hello comfortable can I get you anything? No, I think, um... Need some tea, need some pillows, what you need? Um... If you want to make some tea for Nastani, for when she gets back... Do you want me? I'm okay, I don't... I don't need any, but... Would you like some water? Water might be nice. Okay. But, um... But yeah, maybe... Yeah, maybe just have some for her when she gets back. She might want some, she might not, but... You doing okay? I'm fine. I'm just, like I said, nervous. Okay. And, um, I'm what I feel like, I don't know, my priorities might not be the same as my teammates. And in a way it worries me, but in a way I, part of me wants to care more than I do. And I, this is my family. We're talking about the people that have been in my life the longest and have done everything for me yeah. and I can't, I'm not going to leave them in the dust, I'll do what it takes to get them back. Damn right. I'll help you out however I can. Thank you. Family's important. 
we might, you know, have our issues. Oh, no, we all do, I'm don't sure we? my family does not seem as close-knit as you might have thought. Honestly, I feel like your family seems closer-knit than most. Well, might be a bad mm. thing if you ask some of them, but I agree. Uh, so I get it. I get it, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I understand your concerns with your friends, but, hey, I ain't got shit going on. I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> Thank you, Willem. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. I, I know it's gonna figure itself out. I just... Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm gonna figure it out. We'll figure it out tomorrow. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure Don't it out. I it. just... Right now, it's... I'm gonna try and get some sleep, and yeah. maybe I just... I'm gonna give Miss Ronnie her space, and... Yeah. Hopefully she comes back around. Circle back in the morning. Oh, one thing before I go. Do you want your water hot? I could take it cold, iced, if you have it. I'll look. It's okay. <laughs> he steps down, um, but it's not in the courtyard. Um, I wanted to use the sending stone to okay. message Araya. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying to Araya? Um, I've already counted it out. Okay. Is there a way to see Silas again? I would love to visit your dear city and hope to visit with those I have met. You just here. <laughs> That's adorable. We'll talk soon. When you burn the city down. What did she say this? We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm so. just gonna read Silas's journal entries. Okay. For a bit before I go to bed, then still be quite Yeah, looking through it. There's uh, kind of bits and pieces of uh, you know just the travels that he's had. Um, there's a lot of uh, small drawings here and there. Um, uh, I would say make a make an investigation check. Mm. Comes out to a one. I have a negative one on investigation. I have inspiration. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's up to you. Sure. Okay. Not much better. Six. Six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six is above five. Uh, so you do see the obvious. Um, there are sections of, of the journal that have uh, scribbles over the writing. Um, I, w I would say you read Arkson. You can see what they say. Um, as there, a, a large part of the you know more informative pieces of the journal are written in common. These specific sections <coughs> have scribbles on them, or kind of uh, were have lots of lines crossed through. Words have been uh, replaced. Um, with the ink and quill there, um, but it appeared to be poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say flipping through it, there seem to be four complete poems. If you want those. I do want those. Okay. Well, uh, do you want me to text those to you? Yes, please. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but I would say, uh, most of this category, uh, categories, uh, most of this catalogs, uh, essentially his meeting with uh, Natsuki uh, to the times just before, uh, up until he gave you the journal. Okay, I will send this to you. Um, and is that what you're doing for the night? Mm hmm. Yeah. Alrighty. So. One second, and then we will move on to the most important thing. Um, I will have to redo all the sentences because it didn't translate well. That's okay. Do you drink the tea? I'm in the courtyard reading. <laughs> but you have to go to sleep sometime. I'm probably flopping. You have to close your eyes at some point. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
All right, I think that's close enough that, that you can pick out what it says. Um, so, that being said, uh, those are the four poems you get. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want to share them with the audience at a later time. Or, she won't. Uh, she won't. Post them on her socials um, at the Wayward Seven. But, uh, that being said, Herb. Yes. Make a survival check. <sighs> to find the well. Uh, uh. I'm using my inspiration. Okay, go that for it. Is, that was really bad. Uh. Two net ones. Two net ones? Wow. That's impressive. That is, yeah. That's something. But I left at like nine. Yeah, you, you did. You had time to get lost. Yeah, you find a well. Wait there for about 20 minutes. This can't be it. Move on. Somewhere in the city. Find another well. Okay. Wait another 20 minutes. This can't be it. And this cycle continues for a good three hours. Until eventually you just decide, maybe it's time I ask for directions. And eventually you are pointed towards the center of town. The well being more of a a saying versus a, a literal well. And you drive through the verdant gardens, uh, leading towards, <laughs> I saw that, um, leading towards these uh, massive uh, structure at the center of the city. Um, as you approach uh, Agma's well, <coughs> or the well of Agma, depending on the translation. But on the steps, you see Gaix, arms crossed, as you ride up in the truck. Punctuality is a virtue most sought for in students. My bad, I've never been here before. Forgiveness can be given freely once. Yeah. After that, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> that makes sense. I had 25 did you read the books? I did. How oh, well, then? Enlighten me. Do you wish to study? Yes. Go. So, Vax takes you into the well, and this structure is made out of what appears to be naturally formed stone, almost making the columns themselves as it kind of spirals up and up and up. And what you see is uh, at the center inside here, you see up and you see down. When you look up, you see the moonlit sky above, as there is no roof to this building. And as you look down, black abyss. Deep, deep down, eventually water. It seems to be a library that just spirals upon itself, going up and up and up into the air. And Gaix leads you up for some time, eventually stopping at some guards who kind of check his credentials before allowing the two of you to pass. As you travel up towards the, closer to the top of the spiral, he kind of gestures towards the side. Uh, breaking off, and you see the rows and rows of scrolls and books. The librarians meticulously just kind of keeping eye, reorganizing, misplacing things, and replacing them. Um, but there are small tables there. The guys kind of lead you over to one of the tables um, and sit you down. So, what is it you wish to glean from this? Um, I got this cool cloak. And uh, the person he came from was the, the, little, the wizard person who made the time stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would like to I'd probably learn. Why? Huh? Why? To help my friends out. Do you mean truthful? Yeah. Make a persuasion check. Two plus two, so four. Four. He looks at you. <laughs> the pursuit of knowledge is a grander idea than simply, I wish to help friends. That alone will not give you the power that these books contain. He kind of poof, puts them down on the table. Now, let us start with deepening 
your understanding. You wish to study time, the manipulation of it, the weave. Maybe then he would be late. <coughs> First, find me a reason. A reason to harness such powers. A good one. A noble one. One that your morals align with. What could you do with this power? Help prevent um, uh, the attacks that we've been getting. Like, number one with that Garvier girl. Because she uh, kind of framed us. And then second, we've been kind of getting attacked by moon dogs, things. <laughs> or these animals. That I think has to do with it. So you wish to learn this for defense? Yes. To call to action? A simple reason, but a reason. And what to do with it afterwards? Would you simply forfeit the knowledge? Uh, honestly, I think she was on the right direction, but I don't think she finished her books because she said that she had to go and she'll be right back. But she never came back, I don't think. So I think there's more to be discovered. Very well. So. You have not read the third book. Mm -hmm. I like got through like the first few like intro pages. The book of chronology. This tome is a complicated one. Should you not have read the first, I trust you have the first two tomes. I have read the first two. Excellent. Go ahead and tell me about them. <clears throat> First one was like divination. It taught me about the basics, like with the tarot readings and like the deeper meaning of things. And this is all that I've learned. Um, and like realizing everything is there for a purpose, it enlightened me. Then the second one was kind of like how things are, like like there's an innate magic in every single thing, and everything's perpetuated by magic, like the circle of life. The key term in the second book to hold on to is lifeblood. Mm -hmm. Think of it as blood. It is needed to survive. And incorporating the ideas of divination, everything has a purpose. Think of this world, the universe, not as material objects, but of a living being. That is what the first two books are trying to communicate. The second book, well, the secondary book now, the third book in the trilogy, focuses on the organism itself, how to move the organism, how to manipulate it. Like the brain of the blood. In a way, how it thinks, where the blood goes, stopping it. Things that are considered frowned upon in the wizard communities. That being said, in order to gain full knowledge, you must have some arcane prowess. So, young wizard, demonstrate. <laughs> By all means, show me of your innate talent. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't want to waste another 200 gold. <laughs> uh, 200 gold for what? <clears throat> First lesson. Second lesson. Um, third lesson. spells, but I'm mm. not like the wizard type. What do you know? Um, I'm a cleric. For what reason? For what reason? The knowledge. You're a cleric based in knowledge. Yeah. And what patron do you serve? Um, I've been trying to figure that out. A cleric without purpose who seeks knowledge. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, when you put it like that. It sounds familiar to the wizard archetypes, hmm. which bodes well in your favor. Mm-hmm. But you have yet to show me that you have any capabilities in the arcane natures. Mm. I can, uh, um, I've got a cool little eyeball. By all means, demonstrate. Uh, I use arcane eye. Okay, so you summon the arcane eye? Yeah. Um, and normally an eye that is invisible to most, he watches his eyes flicker, seeing it for what it is. <coughs> what level spells that? Fourth level. Rudimentary. Wow, he just had skill issues. I've only been alive for three months. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Icarus has said. Which bodes well in your favor. As for three months, this is quite the feat. Mm-hmm. With that being said, what bore your clerical nature? You haven't answered. Um, I was uh, killed by this giant flower man. Not flower man, he was a giant flower monster. And uh, he kind of took over my body and I was reborn into this little, little plant. Are you the plant or the corpse within? I'm the plant. Hmm. But why healing? Why healing? Um, I don't know. I think everything was like, like a, a opposite of what I was in my past life. The destroyer. Yeah. Do you feel that you still are? Not really. I can only hurt people with a few of my spells. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's not because I don't want to be. I tried. I can. I. 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 Like I think I think I was reborn not to not to kill. So you seek this alternative power purely for defense. Yeah. I'm satisfied. We will begin studying. I've prepared several pages for you to read, excerpts of the most important ones. You will be filling them out by the night's end. I want full essays. Do not skip. (laughs) We will make a wizard of you yet. By the end of this short tenure, I have the feelings you'll at least explain the basics. Sound promising? Yes. Wait, do I have to stay here and write the essays? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. We will be working until dawn. Awesome. Wait, I, I do have a question. Because my thing just, uh, my sleeping just says that I have to stand still and not like, just do any bearing like, tests, yeah. tasks, will that count as a long rest? Yeah, that's it. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You're sitting in a chair writing. I would like to write. Yeah. yeah. Sitting in a chair writing essays for at least four <laughs> to eight hours. That's, that's resting. That's pretty restful, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> well, my death was That's where we're getting. It takes some exhaustion. Ferb, as right you do this throughout the night, Go ahead and make um, uh, intelligence Constitution check. saving throw. Do I get to long rest before this? Nope. Okay. No, this is make sure that you get to long rest. say is, is above 10, so it is over the threshold for taking a point of exhaustion as you continue the essays for the night. Um, that being said, uh, go ahead and make an arcana check with advantage okay. for studying with Gaix. Okay. Arcana check. Gaix is such a stud. <laughs> taking the modern column. Alright. Arcana? Nice! Wow. You lost 
eight. Wow, okay, nice. Nice. Herb, um, as you spend uh, the night up until dawn uh, studying with Gaix for the next six to eight hours, um, you are picking it up at a fast pace. You're learning, you fly through these sheets and Gaix is surprised um, when you have about two more hours till sun sunlight uh, finally arrives and decides to go ahead and start on the second lesson. So if you guys get a little bit ahead, which bodes oh, nice. well. It's always good. So, um, that being said though, uh, that is your night. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, whenever we're not starting, can you make me some flashcards so I can look at them while I walk around? You may keep the parchment that I've given you. Okay. <laughs> So, flashcards. Uh, that being said, back in Icarus's household, um, your room is just about as you left it. Um, you still see the kind of uh, bolts that you had uh, were working on, uh, kind of still on your desk. You see the kind of mess of hay that has been swept up um, into the nice kind of cozy uh, bird-like bed um, with blankets and uh, feathers. Um, things are homey. You see out the window, you can look outside and see the moon. From this angle, you can also see the well, as well as uh, the Colossus in the distance, far beyond it. It's nice and peaceful. And then a voice rings in your head. Um, hello? Icarus, can you hear me? Uh, this is Kalis. Hello, Icarus. Uh, are you awake? Sorry if you're asleep. Uh, yes? Hi! Oh, hey, Icarus! Oh, my goodness. I, I was... Oh. <coughs> how, how are you? Uh, I, I'm i sorry. I was uh, just calling to see if you were doing okay. See if everybody was okay. I know you guys left a, 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 a fast note. And just wanted to check in. Yes. We're... Uh, we're, we're all doing well. Thank you. Oh, good, good. Um, I just wanted to, you know, make sure you're all still alive. Well... Sorry if I was gone. <laughs> Is everyone okay? No. They're, well... You don't have to tell me if it's bad. Everyone is alive. Now. Okay. I'll take that and try not to worry too much. But I do worry for you guys. Hope you're doing well. Um... I just wanted to see how you're doing. If there's anything I could do to help. I know you're on a big quest to, you know, shed light on a dark deceit. The Laura has a funny way of words. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to check in. Make sure you're okay. Can you bring Scarlet back? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys make it back to Ross? Um, was your friend there? Uh, we weren't aiming for Cross, um, but we, we did meet with Keysphere, as intended. That's good. And then separated not long after. Yeah? Okay. We've lost Silas. That sorry. Yes, it's taken its toll on all of us in different ways. I'm so sorry. Uh, is there anything I can do? <coughs> I'm not a cleric. Well, he's he's not dead. Oh, it's worse than that. Oh. <laughs> I don't know that there is anything to be done, at least not yet, but I'll be sure to call you if I can think of anything. Okay, yeah, yeah, please do. You know, you've uh, um, always got us in your corner, Valora too, you know, she's kind of, you know, antisocial, to say the best. But that being said, you know, um, don't hesitate to check in. 
I'll try. I, I don't know. I don't know if you mind me checking in, but uh, no, it's mm -hmm. it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's comforting. Well, good, good. I uh, hope everything goes well. Um, Thank you. You know, with all that, it's a uh, lot. Uh, how have all of you been? Oh, it's good. It's good. Um, it's good. We uh, you know, I got home. Uh, finally back. We went to visit my grandparents, and um, I, I saw my mother, um, which was good. I told her about everything, and she had mixed feelings about the whole process, shockingly. Um, so she said not to speak of it uh, openly. <laughs> you know, keep it in the family, the discussion of regicide, killing people. Mm -hmm. um, but if it makes you feel better, she said she gets it. Like, you know, the whole, you know, dealing with the greater issues and going back to do something about it. So, that's good. But yeah, pretty quiet. Um, are, you, are you back in Frost? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we're, 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 back, we're in Mithro. Um, right now. Um, I was debating it for a time. I still might, if you guys, you know, uh, need help with anything. I feel slightly responsible for helping out with the whole uh, Brother Gregory situation. Uh, I really should have seen through that. I really should have, and I didn't. Uh, so, wow. I feel a bit responsible. It's one thing for you to not see through some illusion. It's another thing entirely for me to not recognize when I'm speaking with my own brother. Well, well he was very much had many arcane wards over him. He was very much like, trust me, I, I, I have like a, a uh, I, I am arcanely affluent. Uh, so trust me, he was hard to see. Uh, I should have questioned the fact that I couldn't treat him and he used magic openly. So, that's, you know. If you're not attuned, how, how could you know? Anyway, I just wanted to check in. Glad to hear that most everything's okay. Yeah. Morale is good. Um, I hope you guys, you know, figure it out and we're always here if you need support. Thank you, Miss. Never, never be afraid to reach out. Okay, I might check in more often. Then. I know it's night time there, so uh, good night. Good night. Make an ancient sound. But it's about all you hear for that time. And you hear Chris in the other room. Oh, it's so soft. <laughs> I love this bed! And you're mm, <laughs> grumbling as Vespus walks down the stairs. What do you do? But, uh, that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna cozy up in the nest and sleep at peace for the first time in many years. Oh. So cool. Very comfortable. So, Miss Donnie, Gwen, do you head back to the room? Yeah, eventually I do. So, she does it great, my team. You read your pages. She's not. You head back to the room. Uh, Willem has uh, brought the tea. Um, you see, and the tea, how long do you stay out there? As long as I could until I'm. At the point where if I stay awake longer, I get exhausted. Yeah. So I'm, I'm reading through the entire journal. Yeah, it's in depth, and I can give you a description later if you want. Um, sure. All right. So as uh, as you head back into the room, uh, the tea has been set by the side table. It is long cold. The cup next to it even colder as it is a block of ice <laughs> that is slowly melting. Unfortunately, when it seemed that he went to Wilgum to get ice, and Wilgum replied with Make it ice. making ice <laughs> yeah. out of the cup. Okay. 
does. That's such a Wilden thing to do. <laughs> Senile druid does. <laughs> but uh, Gwen, are you staying up all night or? I think she's in. I think she is like in bed, but she's awake, waiting for Nastani to come in. Okay. But she doesn't want Nastani to know that like she was waiting. Just rolled over. Sure. I'd say eventually, you, you know, the footsteps around the house never really stop. <laughs> Some of these names are night owls. Yeah. Um, and uh, you hear several, good night, good night, good night, as the Sonny <laughs> kind of uh, slowly opens up the door and crouches inside. Um, but, going to bed? Curling up with the journal in my hand. Okay. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, once she realizes the Sonny's inside. Drift off to sleep. However, for one of you, sleep is not easily found. Dang it. Nastani. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, the bait and switch. <laughs> no, I'm excited. Yeah. Nastani, as you dream, you read poems and journal pages and scratched out letters and had some time to reflect and see the kind of uh, you've been focusing on this deeper uh, kind of hidden side of uh, this person that you once knew and as your thoughts drift to the darkness of sleep a voice stops you <laughs> Miss Mimtopen and your eyes open you're sitting at the grand hall in Arias Chateau. The lanterns burn this dull red dim light, and there are no doors or exits to the chamber anymore. On one end of the table, you see Oriya sitting across from you. I heard you wanted to talk. Yes, I did. Well, do go on. I'm always one to entertain royalty. She kind of snaps and you watch as uh, a glass kind of begins to fill in front of you with um, this kind of blood red or wine. Just her own glass fills and slowly takes a sip. I do appreciate the gesture, I just don't drink. Ah. Tea. You watch as the liquid begins to shift color. If you drink a rice tea, I'm gonna be so mad. mad. <laughs> I mean, she'll pick up the cup, she won't drink it just yet, but... Yeah. Alright, drinks. Now, I don't mean to be one that is to be cutting these visits short, but I would like to get down to the brass tacks of why you, of all people, contacted me on my day off. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm still <laughs> from what?! I apologize that it was on your day off. I understand those are precious days. Yes. <clears throat> Quite. I had just, it has come to my understanding that Silas is under your direction. Silas. Which one's that? Silas uh. Reeves. Cowboy. Oh. Yes, I believe he made a deal recently. Yes, the one who made a deal recently with my car. My Victor's card. Um... The cards go to whoever I think has earned them, and Silas made quite the offer. What offer did he make? Mr. Reeves asked not to disclose said offer, but I can tell she you She signed that. an NDA. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I can tell you that. She's kind of uh, sets the glass down and begins playing with this little coin that kind of flips between her fingers. That he, well, he couldn't pay for it. <laughs> so he used something else. Is there any way for me to pay it back for him? Pay it back? What are you implying? Speak plainly, Miss Donna. It was a. Speaking plainly option, is there a way to pay it back? 
pay back what he gave. What did he give? Everything. Everything for something. Is there a way to see him? The quiet car spells. I suppose you can see him quite well, can't you? Flip it and watch the coin vanish. Is it a coin? <laughs> it's a small coin. <laughs> Big coin. No. How do I get that back? You want that. Yes. Of all things. Yes. Well, I suppose you have to give. Now, if you're looking for direct answers, I can extrapolate. If you're interested in signing a deal. What would that entail? I know you and your deals. You I do. know they can... I've already had to go through with one before, so I know what you can do. Well, if you're interested, three come to mind. Soul for a soul. Something... More, or perhaps life for life. Common, really. And you watch as three scrolls appear in front of you. What goes under the something more? What could be worth more than a soul to you? <laughs> well, you're spoiling all the time. Which one are you looking at first? I'm going to read the something more one. Not so, something, just reading. These are quite simple. Um, there's only about a paragraph of text on them, but there are two signatures with a rise name already signed, um, and then a spot for what you presume to be your name. And as you read the something more, this document certifies an accord between Orion, custodian of the Hidden Realms, and the esteemed signatory to bestow upon one Silas Reeves the breath of life anew. In return, a nominal tribute is requested, the gentle utterance of a name that of Nastani Mendovan, to be ha held in her care. Henceforth, this name shall be known, uh, shall be a key to untold influence, yet will drift away from the minds and hearts of kin, as if a leaf carried away by the wind. A small price to pay, in return for one's cherished soul. Right. Reading the next one? <laughs> what are you reading next? Um, <coughs> you know, soul for souls, pay self-explanatory, so what's the specifics of the life for a life? In accordance with the ancient laws of equivalent exchange, I, Oriah, extend an offer to rekindle the life force of one Silas Reeves, returning him to the shadows back, uh, returning him from the shadows back to the warmth of existence. The signatory and demonstration of the value of life shall agree to the comp uh, to recompense this gift through the act of equal measure upon one whose time, uh, one whose time the fates decree has come. The chosen be and you watch as these names fill in as you read them. Callisti Erlen, or the necromancer known as Keysphere, shall be named in due time. Their departure shall be ensured. The cosmic scales remain in harmony. So, you, to break it down in less fancy words, one of those people has to die to bring him back. I'll call it Keysphere right now. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of the way. <laughs> Why would we kill the other girl? Because there's no emotional attachment there. And I, well, I mean. But she's nice, so it's an easy to do. Oh, they did go to get out. Why these two names specifically? <laughs> well. Do you have a vendetta against or be um business with both or something? No, not particularly. But they are both two very valuable souls. Ones that would make me want to forfeit the chips that I have. I have people for some chips right about now. <laughs> I am hungry. <laughs> so, it's either I give away my existence, I give away my soul, or I have to kill another person's life on my own to get his back. Existence is not on the table. I think you misunderstand. I would simply take your name. What's simple about that? How 
There's nothing simple about taking a name. Hey, double check what this well, old one says. There's nothing simple about taking a life either. But does the soul one read specifically? Specifically. By the power vested in the undersigned, Orion, the sovereign of the abyssal depths, I hereby offer the restoration of one Silas Reeves to the realm of the living. In exchange, the signatory agrees to a simple transaction, ensuring balance is maintained. Upon the natural uh, conclusion of Silas's extended tenure, the signatory shall embrace a new beginning within the realms uh, that she governs within six months' time, their essence taking the place of the one left vacant. This agreement celebrates the cycle of life, give and take, ensuring that no debt remains unpaid. So in six months' time, I'll become a piece of metal? A piece of metal is a bit archaic, but a drop in the bank, I suppose. And these are your three offers, you don't have any other offers? No favors to oh, be done. Would you like to make a better one? If I don't make a deal now, will I not be able to make a deal in the future? As in, would I be able to think on this and then contact you again? Or is this your only night of generosity? I would look at it more as he's in my possession now. Should the currency switch hands? Well, you might have to look elsewhere. He is at the top of the wallet. So, just pray don't make any big purchases. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what you'd gain from having my name, my soul, or otherwise, because I'm essentially exiled from my own country, so I don't even have the chains of power that you'd want from me. This isn't about what I want. It's about what you want. You want what's in this coin. I have made an offer of things that I see fitting of a simple homeless man. <laughs> He's special to me. Does that mean that the message I sent him actually went to you? Because that's a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Time is money. I'm aware. I know everything about that. So I wouldn't be able to think on this for a day and then call on you the next. You may certainly try. Damn, you can't use the DM line as one of the NPCs. It's not fair. <clears throat> like I said, just hope I don't call a shopping spree. I would like to make a deal with you, but I want it on my own terms. Can I have time to think of one over? Hmm. You have caught me a little off guard tonight. I do apologize. But you were the one who knocked on my door. I know I knocked on your door, but I wasn't exactly thinking you'd reply. Open it. <laughs> well, courtesy for loyalty. Thank you. But if you wish, I can revoke that courtesy. Yeah, I know the song. <laughs> I, I got the sweaty palm for you. I don't have anybody to talk to. It's just her in my mind. Mm -hmm. No one to talk to at all. Not like you would tell us anyways. Secret, <laughs> 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 secret. <clears throat> I don't know. 
I need to be full transparent. I don't know. Because I don't know which deal I would take. Well, do you need me to simplify them for you? Yes. <laughs> well, one, the first one, a soul for a soul, essentially boils down to you taking his place after some time. The second one, something more, is your name. Your name and whatever it holds, I suppose. That being said, it's something that I see my way. Despite being excommunicated, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, hunted down. Might even work out for you. And the life. I take it that he had a positive impact. So you will simply take the lives of two others who could have great positive impacts. Oh, was it both? I thought it was either so, or. So, just. There's a life taken regardless. Yes. Arguably, far more valuable than the homeless man. Equal Just about. So if you're saying this is far more valuable, why not just do an equal trade off of the merit of what he is? That's the soul for a soul. Am I, can I not be given a day to think these deals are over? <coughs> you may do as you wish. But... Tick-tock. I cannot guarantee anything. How much to buy a soul coin? <laughs> what do you use to purchase with this anyway? You can make her the dress she wants to buy. Well, I suppose it would involve filling out a contract. Call me on now. <laughs> I suppose one of these might be worth exactly what you're looking for. You could sign a blank one. I don't know if you're the same boat as me. <laughs> no, no. Just the deals. On the table. Unless you wish to offer. I don't know what I can offer. Well, it sounds like to me it didn't really matter. That's not nice. She's a nice person. <laughs> Why do you care? Because he's my friend and I didn't get to say goodbye. It's tragic. And he shouldn't have been taken in the first place. That's what he wanted. It's not when I wanted. You begged. You begged. Well put. But we can just leave this in the past if you wish. Go about our nights. I will call on you tomorrow night, and I will let you know which deal I'll take, or which ones, if I take any at all. I hope you get a response. And with that, your vision darkens. I didn't like that dream. Did you wake up in the middle of the night? So, dawn arrives, and everybody can mark off a long rest. Oh, good. And as you all prepare for the next day, that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. Oh, nice. What fun. Uh. Ah, good, nice round ending. Love it. Um, but we'll pick up next time with Herb's uh, tutor, um, <laughs> with uh, Gwen's search for her brothers, um, Icarus's bed sheet 
I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Homecoming? Homecoming, <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna he's go with dance. his parents. Dance. Yeah, that's <laughs> fun. You can find There's a masquerade uh, coming up. So. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's the true. homecoming dance. Um, but anyway, we hope to see you guys next time. But uh, before we sign off, uh, make sure to subscribe. Like subscribe. Because. Thank you. Follow us on social media at the website. But website. that's what not what he said. Uh, follow us on our social medias at the way we're seven. Uh, like Jack said, and Ethan like subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Tell us what you think about this episode, and we hope to see you next time on the, the Wayward Seven. Wayward seven.